I thought today would be a good opportunity for you to get a peek into the life of an artist six years post-graduation. But having looked back at all of that stuff, where does that leave us now and what are my next steps? Welcome to you 2.0 into the Robin Sealer channel. Are you looking to enter a new phase of your art journey and artistdom? Well, have we got a video for you today. Last week, I had a lot of thoughts going about mindfulness and vulnerability showing up to your artwork and how you can be intentional in moving into the next phase of your artistry. Today, I would like to talk about those topics. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you will subscribe if you do. And check me out on social media at Robin Sealark across the web. Thank you and enjoy. Coming into this week, I knew I was jumping into it having been reflective last week about what I wanted to be making and how I could be more intentional in the steps I was taking and the artwork I was creating. From critique in the comments I got, I actually pulled this wisdom nugget, which I think led me to think about the types of surfaces that I am buying to work on top of. It made me want to just generally upgrade the level of my professionalism and the artistry, the things that I'm sending out. I had the thought to make a little sacrifice to the art gods and do some whitewashing and in this crusade of the artist 2.0, being willing to let go of some stuff and consider it part of, of something I'm moving away from into the past or making room for what's in the future. There were a few topics I wanted to cover during this video and I do have some notes so hope you don't mind me reading them. These are some notes I took when I was looking into Brene Brown's work and she was talking about vulnerability. She said to dare greatly and to live in the arena or to show up. I want to bring this up in hopes of intending you to show up in your present moment, to come into this time when you are an artist and be really active in considering where you've come from and where you are and where you might want to aim to be, to be really present with the art you are making in this moment, the life you are living in this moment, the type of ideas and creativity that you can tap into. To be creative is a bit scary because you're forging paths without knowing what is to come. You're making new things. You're developing a pathway. With that comes a lot of room for failure or uncertainty. This quote came from Brene Brown. She said, vulnerability is about having the courage to show up when you can't control the outcome. Willingness to do with no guarantees. I think that's the essence of being present, which is something we wanna do when we are sinking into this current phase of you as an artist. To be vulnerable, to make space for creativity, to innovate, she said that you must have tolerance for failure. I love that idea, accepting failure. Some of you know, because I talk about it, that I am a previously religious person finding my own path uh, now. And a way that I've been working on spirituality, raising my goodness, getting in touch with my needs and what I want to make and put out into the world has been uh, mindfulness generally. Mindfulness kind of combines uh, Western and Eastern philosophy, medicine, different practices that are linked to Buddhism. A large call to action in many of the resources that I've been looking into call you to sit with uncomfortable feelings. Invite it, accept it there, and to look at it and sit with it and to really confront the hard things that you can process them. There's a fair amount of vulnerability in coming into a next phase of yourself as an artist. You have to be willing to show up with the mind and thoughts of an interested student who is willing to accept 
critical feedback potentially or to not get engagement with their work and to deal with some of the unsettling feelings that happen in those moments. But as you invest in looking at what you're making and talking to your community, processing real-time feedback, and being specific about what you're trying to do moving forward, you can reach toward those goals and have that kind of active participation in collecting information and resources from your community, getting ways uh, to process self-reflection so that you might be able to look more into your work and approach it with a certain level of vulnerability in terms of putting yourself out there, connecting with imagery that matters to you, trying your best and not always succeeding. I want to talk a little bit about how my Artist 2.0 showed up in this artwork making so that you can use it as a reference to process your own next moves in your Artist 2.0 venture. So last week when I looked over my past years of artwork, I was thinking in those which pieces I felt most drawn to, connected to as an artist, and what I wanted to explore and push forward more. Now I don't have my full artist concept, statement, or intention molded, but I did get a lot of insight into the types of image making I wanted to be pursuing more. And so this week I chose an image particularly directed at things that I think could help to advance me a bit academically, as well as in the types of images I know I'm going to be pursuing making in whatever variety or form moving forward. I went in and tried to do something a little bit more academic, studied, and thought thoughtful to push myself and then also used artistic license on top of it to make it my own and to break into some creative headspace that made the work intriguing to me again. The idea of U2.0 was something that I came across in an episode or a series on Hidden Brain podcast, but on it they brought on the psychologist Emily Balsetis, who did work about your mind's eye and how having a singular focus on your goal, having it visually placed there and working with your sight as a way to keep you motivated and moving more quickly and with less effort uh, towards your destination. With those kinds of things in mind, how can you keep visual reminders for yourself in place to help move you towards your destination? How can you get more focused on your particular artist intense so that you can move with greater ease and in a more direct line to the types of things that you want to be doing. In creativity there's importance and need for space for you to branch out, try new things, and you can do that throughout your lifetime as an artist. But if you are interested in this idea of this artist 2.0, what are ways that you can direct that creativity to push you where you wanna be going? And how can you be more thoughtful about becoming the kind of artist you want to be? Thank you for listening and watching. If you want to subscribe, I would love that. Click the notification bell for notifications. And you can follow me on social media throughout the week support me by buying a painting at robinsealark.com or on my Patreon, patreon.com slash Thank you, and I will see you next week.